Hey guys, welcome back. Imperts Kasha here, and we're back at it again with Love at First Sight. So, as you know, last time they went on a quote-unquote double date. Uh, whether it really was a double date, probably not, since uh, um, our, our buddy here doesn't seem to uh, see her that way. But, you know, I think they could end up going out. We'll just have to see as the game progresses. Anyhow, let's carry on where we left off. Sachi and I watch them as they go to find somewhere to clean up, their chocolate situation getting steadily worse. Those two sure are lively. <laughs> yeah, but a Kimi senpai does make life exciting, right? Uh, yeah, things are rarely boring with her around. Tomoyori senpai is a really nice person, even if he seems even if he says mean things sometimes. That's just how he is. Akimi's really got a hold on him. <laughs> They're a good match for each other. No kidding. They're great though, aren't they? They are. You know, I haven't known them that long, but I can tell you guys will become close friends in no time. Hey, I've been hearing some rumors about what uh, Saroka was been doing to you. It doesn't sound good at all. You never told Mayumi-san or anyone else because you didn't want to cause trouble for them, right? Sachi doesn't reply, but she's not denying it, so I'm pretty sure I hit the nail on the head. Like I said, like I said this morning, I think even Mayumi-san will listen to what you have to say. All of us around you, we're all your allies. So, Sachi, if you think you need to, I'll... I just never want to see you get hurt again. I've never asked for help from anyone. I never fought back against Sadakawa. It's like you just said. I just don't want to trouble anyone if I can avoid it. I see. But... It's it's not just that. I never stood up for myself because I didn't have the courage to do so. I didn't have the courage to do anything. If I was brave, I might be able to fight back against Sadakawa-san. I might be able to tell her off. Well, when push comes to shove, I'll be here for you. You can't be worried about causing other people trouble in times like this. Both for your sake and for the sake of those who care about you. And you're stronger than you realize, Sachi. Maybe. Definitely. But it's a decision that you have to make. I I understand. Then next time Sadakawa tries to do something, I'll tell her to stop. Good. And if things get bad, it's okay to ask the people around you for help. Uh, okay. But it doesn't sound like her heart is in it. Sorry. I, sorry for bringing that up so, so suddenly. It's probably not something we should uh, be talking about right now. Today's supposed to be a day where we can have fun together and forget our troubles. Hey, if you don't eat your crepe, you're going to end up like a Kimmy. Oh, right. With that, she starts eating the crepe in her hand once more. I hope it can help Sachi take her mind off Sadokawa. It looks good. Are you enjoying it? Yes. I don't really get to eat this sort of thing at all. It's probably the best thing I've ever tasted. I guess I should have asked Tomo to give me one too. Oh, then do you do you want a bite? Huh? But here. Sachi holds the crepe up to my mouth. I'm all too conscious of the fact that Sachi had her own mouth all over it. <laughs> that's... Wow, that's, uh, that's quite a way to describe, uh, you know. Yeah, okay. Uh... <laughs> Maybe she's trying to pay me back for when I shared my lunch with her that one time. Sachi stares at me expectantly, her hand moving. Well, okay. I take a bite of the crepe before me. I is it good? Y yeah. 
I have no idea what's in this thing, but it's incredibly sweet. So sweet! Jeez, you two! Doing something so sweet like that while we're gone. Startled, I jerked my head around to see that Akimi and Tomo have returned. They totally just saw that, didn't they? Suddenly, my face feels like it's on fire, and I look over at Sachi to see that her cheeks have also gone red. But she seems almost happy about it somehow. That's so cute! Tomo, I want us to do that too! We can't. I've already devoured your crate, didn't you? Uh, you already devoured your crate, didn't you? Let's buy another, then! I refuse. Suddenly, a great boom comes out of nowhere, and all four of us jump in surprise. What the heck was that? I look towards the direction of the sound, but the crowd makes it impossible to locate its source. What indeed. Maybe it was part of one of their performances we saw. The performances we saw. Yeah, right! We saw a lot of people doing shows and stuff on our way in. Let's go over there and try to find them. Oh yeah, well... Then, let's go, Sachi. Are you done with your crate? Yeah, just one more bite. It seems like the rest of the day is going to be a lot of fun. I'll try to make it as fun for Sachi as I can. I like it when she smiles so much. Alrighty. Oh, another chapter? Aww. Final act. My eyes on you. On your art. Oh, really sorry. So wait, this is the final art? Wow. Kinda surprised. Well. I don't know if it'll end this episode though. It, we might get a next episode for the final one. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm seriously in a bad mood. I wanna hit something. I'm in class, but I'm so pissed. I can't concentrate on what's being taught. Wait, uh, Rui, is that the other name of, uh, Sadokawa? That's her first name? I think. Um, especially going by this attitude. Uh, well, let's see. <laughs> Last weekend, they said there was some kind of event going on. So I went into town to check it out. What I saw there really disgusted me. I saw another group of students from my school there. I'm not saying I hate them just because they're from my school, though. What disgusted me was that they, uh, that they were with one of my classmates, Usui Sachi. Of course I couldn't start something there, in, the cra in that crowd of people. So I just beat the crap out of a trash can and went home. I hate those guys. That girl with only one eye, well... She's fun to kick around, but I don't hate her because of how she looks or anything. I hate her because she's a spineless insect. Even if I insult her, she never gets mad. Even if I grab her leg and trip her up, she never tries to fight back. She's never com she never complains. Hell, she never even glares at me as she's scurrying away. The way I see it, there's no reason for me to stop anytime soon. She'll never ask anyone for help. She'll never even have friends who can help her. I hate her, but I love how she trembles when I hurt her. That's why she'll always be my punching bag. But lately, something's been getting between me and my punching bag. There's been some second year guy who I think only transferred in a few months ago and he's been sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. I doubt that weakling just asked for help from some upperclassman she doesn't even know. I bet he's just helping her because it makes him feel good about himself. It lets him feel like he's better than someone. But I don't care how much he needs to use her as his pathetic confidence booster. She didn't do anything to deserve that. The coward. She's just got lucky. This weekend, she was with that second year guy and two others. And she looked so happy, it made me sick. I've seen the other two she was with before. I especially remember that Akimi girl. In middle school, she came to preach to me about how I was so mean or some crap. With that stupid white knight attitude. Sorry for drinking, guys. It's just like, 
I'll probably edit, start editing my videos in the future, but for now I'm still gonna do the non-edit. Maybe once I reach a thousand I'll start doing more editing. It's just like, I'm already constrained on time because of work. And I would have to kind of like learn the whole, I mean, I, I would know how to edit, but it's like I, I'd have to like learn it as I go, like getting better at it. So that might take a while. If you guys want me to start editing these videos, let me know and I can try to start doing that. I can just comment below. And I'm sorry about having to drink the water. Like I said, it's just like this voice is kind of like messing with my throat. And I know it's not, I know I can't do girl voices, but I try to at least do something for them, you know? Try to, like, distinguish between the characters. Like I said, now that I have my new computer, I can probably start getting some other people in, so we'll see about doing that for future videos. Especially because I'm planning on rebooting A Cold Love Story with, um, a female, uh, voice actress helping me. Alright, let's carry on. As I found out, she was in high school I was going to. As soon as I found out that she was in the same high school I was going to, I waited to see if she'd come at me again. But she never did. I doubt she wants anything to do with me anymore. After what I did to her. But now, I feel like she's spit in my face. I'm running out of patience. Finally, the bell rings and school is over. Sachi's going to try and be the first one out of the classroom again, but today, I'm not going to let her get away. I reach the doorway before her and stop her from leaving. Hey! Yeah, so I was right, it was her, yeah. You could tell with the attitude that it was her. But yeah, just look. It's, her canines are pretty sharp, damn. Look at that. Y yes Come here, I want to talk to you. I grab her arm before she can say anything and drag her out of the classroom. That th 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 hurts! I would normally start using her as my punching bag right then and there. But this time, I need to find someone we won't be disturbed. School's over, and the only students on the stairway are those going to their club activities. I drag her up to the door that leads to the roof and pin her there. Uh, s s stop stop it um please did that little bitch just try to talk back to me what the hell did you just say to me i i, I said um sh s uh any resistance she wanted to show me leaks out of her and she shuts her mouth her white knight friends must have been trying to get her to stand up to me. I don't like that, and I let her know by driving my fist into her stomach several times. Mm. It's time all she... This time all she does is take it. So much for standing up to me. See, she'll never change. I shove her and she tumbles backwards. As she comes tumbling down, something falls out of her pocket and hits the ground with a clatter that echoes in the stairway. Looks like it's her cell phone, and she's got a new strap on it that I've never seen before. I pick it up in my left hand before she can move. And, uh, before she, uh, yeah, before she can... Okay, mm, sorry. <laughs> uh... Left hand before she can, and move to smash it against the ground. No! She stares at her phone like a retard. What? Wow! What? What even is that? St stares at the phone like a retard. How does a retard stare? What? Okay. Well, that's, that's one way to describe staring, I guess. I, I don't know. But her eye is suddenly on me, and it's full of rage. I've never seen her uh, seen such a piercing, angry glare. It stops me before I can throw her phone. Her freakish eyeball is only making it worse, and that eye seems to be brimming with courage I've never seen in her before. Leave me alone already! She jumps, she jumps back on her feet, and I can tell she's not going to back down this time. And give me back my phone! 
She's yelling now. I'm so surprised to hear her raise her voice at me like, like that. I stand there stupidly for several seconds. And then, the phone in her hand starts to ring. He's calling. Give it to me. Like hell I'm going to just let her have it. Give it back! Now! But she doesn't wait for me to move, and marching up to me, tries to snatch the phone out of my hand. No you don't! Sorry, I can't keep the voice, I keep changing, because like, it's, it's hard to do like, two voices that, you know, like, aren't, aren't good girl voices in the first place. And then just trying to like, switch them back and forth. I might start doing the narration just in my regular voice, I'm not sure. I think I'll keep it up for just this episode at least, but if it continues on to the next episode, I'll probably switch back over. We'll see. I shake her off and aim a punch at her face. And she tries to block it! I've never seen her fight back or try to protect herself like this before. She's no fighter. She's no fighter though, so even with this newfound energy, she can't stop me from driving my fist into her face. But even though my blow connects, she stands her ground, barely letting out a sound and regaining her balance right away. Before I can pull my hand back, she grabs onto my wrist. Give it back! And again, she reaches for the phone in my left hand. Now that she's holding onto my right hand, I can't hit her so easily. As easily. I push into her shoulder with the arm she's latched onto and kick her left leg out from under her. She's already leaning forward and reaching for her phone, so this is easily throws her off balance. Eek! Well, that was like a <laughs> at the end there. I don't even know what that was. It's like <laughs> It's like she just changed her nationality. I don't know. Reflexively, I push on her again and throw her onto the floor behind me. I turn around to follow the throw up with another punch. Or, I try to. Oh shit! We're on the stairway. There's no floor behind me! I had sent her flying with more force than I meant to use. Everything seems to slow down as she flies down the stairs towards the landing far below her. Oh. Oh shit. Come on, me. Mamoru! Mamoru! You got a job to do, son. You gotta save her. Wait, Sachi's not here yet? I thought you went to go find her. I arrived at the shoe rack at the exit of the school building to find Tomo and Akimi waiting there. Today, like always, I went straight to the first year classrooms to meet Sachi. I couldn't find any trace of her, though. Thinking I might have missed her, I headed here. Maybe you just didn't notice her in the crowd. No way. She would have said something to me. We've never missed going home together. I don't think she went home early, either. Hmm. Ah, hang on a sec. Akimi runs to a passing student and asks her something. Someone she knows? Well, yeah, but you've seen that girl before, haven't you? Akimi's asking her about Sachi-chan. Now that he mentions it, I think I do. I sometimes see her when I, um, go to meet Sachi at her classroom. Actually, she's in the same class, isn't she? Man, Akimi really does have a big network of friends. Whatever the student is telling her, Akimi suddenly looks very worried and runs back to us. Hakun! She said that after class, Sachi left the classroom with Rui-chan. What? Sarakawa? Where did they go? That much I don't know. I've gotta find her! Hey, Mamoru, jeez. Well, I guess it would be more efficient if we split up. Mamoru will probably be going to the upper floor, so Akimi, you check the first floor, I'll search around the outside of the building. Gotcha! Alright, at least he's going up the stairs. Hopefully he finds her fast. Let's hope we can save her. Let's go, let's go! Until now, Sadako has never actually tried to take Sachi anywhere. Or at least, Sachi's never told me if she has. I've got a bad feeling about this. I climb the stairs as quickly as I can. Wait, what am I doing? I should try calling her before I go searching blindly. I take out my phone while I'm running up the stairs and call Sachi. Of course, 
until she actually picks up. I can't do anything but search blindly. I pass the second floor. I pa all right. I pass the second floor by. Those are our classrooms. And if Sadakawa is going to take Sachi somewhere, it's not going to be anywhere near us. If she took Sachi outside the school, she'd have had to go past Tomo and Akimi, since they were waiting by the shoe rack. The first floor has too much traffic going through it, it's so she wouldn't go there either. Given all that, it's very possible that she took Sachi up to the third floor. Finally, I arrive at the top of the stairs, on the third floor, but now what? There haven't been any clues that might point to where they're, where they've gone so far. Sachi hasn't answered her phone, but it must still be ringing. I rest at the third floor landing, trying to figure out what to do next. I hear a ringtone coming from nearby. It's got to be Sachi's. They must be close. It's coming from somewhere above me. I immediately think of the stairway leading up to the roof, where Sachi and I ate lunch together not so long ago. Give it back! I hear a voice cry out from the same direction. It's definitely Sachi. I sprint up the stairway. The moment I turn on the midway landing between the two floors, I see Sachi fly down the stairs in front of me, and behind her is Sadokawa, arm outstretched. Watch out! I jump up the stairs, my body operating on instinct. At this point. Eek! Sachi! My mind goes blank as my body dives forward, just barely managing to get my arms between Sachi and the floor, and the force of her fall brings us both down. It's not what... M it's not what m might be considered a graceful catch, but at least I stopped her from hitting her head. Sachi, are you okay? I get a hold of myself and manage to stand up before helping Sachi to her feet. S-senpai, you came for me. Yeah, are you hurt? I, I hit my knee, but I think I'm fine otherwise. I guess I couldn't completely protect her. She grimaces as she lets go of me and tries to stand on her own. As I look her over and catch for... Uh, check for other injuries. The first thing I notice is a bruise on her face that she didn't have when we met for lunch today. It didn't look too bad though, so we can deal with that later. Okay, well right now, I think we need to get you to the school nurse. Senpai? Are you okay? Yeah, don't worry about me. I couldn't completely support her when I caught her, and her weight brought my arms down to bang against the floor. That, of course, hurts like hell. But I can't show any weakness right now. I'm not screaming in pain, at least. So there's probably no permanent damage anyway. Hey, Sadakawa! I lock my pain down and turn to face Sadakawa, who is isn't still standing at the top of the stairs. If I hadn't been here, Sachi pro would probably would... Sachi probably would have gotten her seriously injured or worse. Like I care. It was an accident anyway. But she looks away from me as she says it. When Sachi was falling, it did look like Sadakawa tried to reach out for her. She was she probably isn't lying about that, but that doesn't make her any less responsible. And I'm sure she's also responsible for the new marks on Sachi's face. Stop bullying Sachi. Yeah? Why should I listen to you? Because you almost got her killed just now. What do you think will happen to you if I tell a teacher as your or your parents what you did? Yeah? If you don't leave me alone, I'll make sure everyone knows what you're doing. Sachi doesn't retreat behind me. She just stands her ground looking at Sadakawa and- it, Oh wait, maybe that was Sadakawa. Was that- Was that Sachi that said that just now? It might have been. Uh, let's see. Can I go back? Uh... Yeah, it was. Okay, sorry. I read that wrong. Yeah. If you don't leave me alone, I'll make sure everyone knows what you're doing. Yeah, that line didn't make any sense when I read it the other way. I was like, wait, what? What, what just happened? That makes a lot more sense. Alright. Sanshi doesn't retreat behind me. She just stands her ground, looking Sadakawa in the eye. Are you threatening me? You've got some nerve. Sadakawa walks down several steps, advancing towards Sachi menacingly. I just want you to stop doing this. 
Sachi doesn't back away at Sadakawa's approaches. I can't stop. I can't stand weaklings like you. And I refuse to let someone as pathetic as you do as you please. Then I'll tell... But I won't let you snitch on me. If you do, there'll be trouble. What are you saying? I'm going to disappear. Huh? I'm saying I'm going to leave this school. It's not like I have any friends here, and I can't mess with you anymore. So there's no point in being here. I'll transfer to a different school. My parents don't give a shit anyway. You, you don't have to go that far. Shut up! I can't even stand to be around you anymore. And I can't let you snitch on me. So I'm leaving. Got it. Sadakawa presses Sachi's phone into her hand before heading down the stairs. We watch her go and keep staring at her at the stairwell, even after she's gone, both of us completely dumbfounded by what just happened. After a while, Tomo and Akemi appear on the stairs, in place of Sadakawa. Momoru, Sachi-chan, are you guys alright? We just passed Rui-chan on the stairs! Was she here? Yeah, she was. I don't really know what just happened, to be honest. But she said she'd stop bullying Sachi. She also said that she hated her, and she was going to change schools. Wait, Rui-chan said that? Yeah. I don't know if she's serious or not. There's no way... There's no way that's going to happen. Why not? Didn't Sadakawa say she was going to change schools in middle school as well, Kimmy? It was for a similar reason too, I think. What the hell? I'm going to go talk to her! Akemi rushes down the stairs and we can hear her stomping down the hallway even after she steps outside. Hey, Akemi! She's that girl. Tomo follows her down the stairs. Will Akemi Senpai be okay? Tomo's the one I'm worried about. Well, whatever. Sadakawa said she was going to transfer to another school, but I wonder if it really is that easy, you know? At least... I can do more than just cry now. Yeah, you stood up to her. I was amazed, honestly. You're completely different from when we first met. It's all thanks to you, Senpai. You're giving me too much credit. In the end, you're the one who stood up to her, not me. Even so... Thanks for everything you've done, for helping me change, for finding me. Hey, you know, this is where we first met, isn't it? We haven't come back here in a long time, have we? Yeah, lately we've been having lunch on the second floor with Akemi and Tomo. I really am grateful to you, Senpai. She has changed. She hasn't been stuttering nearly as much as when we first met. And she smiles a lot more as well. And when we talk, she looks right at me instead of, well, anywhere else. But that eye of hers never changed. It stayed bright and shining this whole time. And I can't get it out of my mind. We stand there in silence for a while. I gaze into her eye, and she gazes into mine. Hey. Yeah. yes You know, uh, even if she doesn't leave the school, I don't think she'll be hurting you anymore. I think you're right. I'm not the weakling she thought I was anymore. And when push comes to shove, you really were there for me, senpai. You saved me. I guess that means your wounds are finally going to heal. Yeah, I guess so. Do you want to touch them? While I still have them, I mean? Seriously, what is this fetish? Sh sure. What? Oh, wait. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Alright. You know what? Oh, okay. Alright. Like I said, just 
It's probably better not to question it. Okay. Saji closes her eyes and presses her body into mine, just like last time. Maybe it's selfish of me, but I've been waiting for this. I put my right hand on her shoulder, just like last time. You know, this is, uh... I guess he's kind of really getting into this uh, fetish here, I don't know. But, uh... Seems to be going quite on, you know? Quite on. So, I don't know how much is left in the, um... In the game. So, I'm wondering if I should just keep playing for now, at least until the scene's over. Because, like, this is the final chapter. So I'm thinking after the scene it could be the end of the game, but I don't want to make a five minute episode as the final one, so I think I'm just gonna keep going for now and see how you know, see how long it goes. So this could end up being like a 40 minute episode, we'll just have to see. But this time, I don't push my hand on the scar on her brow instead. While her eye is still closed, while she's so vulnerable, I put my free hand under her chin and lift her head up before putting my lips to hers. Uh, uh. I let our lips touch for only a moment, just enough for Sachi to feel it, and she rears back a little, blinking at me in astonishment. That, that, that was unfair, you know? Yeah, I know. Sorry. D do it again. Do it right this time. Now we're even, I think. Her eye has caught me in its spell, and I couldn't refuse her, even if I wanted to. I take her by the shoulders again, as we slowly come together, her eye open this time. Just as I feel myself being drawn into her eye, I draw her body close to me. Ooh. Is, that, is that the end? Oh, sure enough, looks like that was the end, lads. Alright. So, we made it to the end of the game, guys. That was pretty good. I, I, I like that game. I really enjoyed it. I think this is a, actually not a visual novel. I think this is actually what's known as a kinetic novel because, um, like, we did, kinetic novels are where you don't have choices. That you, it's kind of like um, reading, like, a manga, but in game form, like, in the, in the format of a visual novel. Um, so, like, because, like, we didn't make any choices. Like, it was kind of like a preset story. But, um... Yeah, I, I think it was really well made, and I think it was, you know, a nice little story. Had a good ending. So, um, we unfortunately don't get to see if Akemi and Tomo got together, but, uh, you know, I leave it up to your preference. If you want them to get together, that can be the future that you have uh, preset for this. If you didn't want them to get together, well, then they didn't, you know? It's up to you. It's, a, it's up to interpretation. However, our main characters definitely got together. Alright, Mamoru and Sachi are, are a couple, alright? Alright. I did want to see more of what would happen with the ant. Um, this seems more like a one-off game. I don't think there's going to be a second one. If there was, though, I if there if there was something I would like to have seen more of, it is actually not the uh, Kimmy uh, Tomo thing, though I would have I thought that would have been cute. It's more so like um, I would like to see the improvement of the um, relationship with the ant. Uh, it did improve some, but I would like to see the conclusion of that. Thank you for playing. Well, thank you for making this game. It was, it was lovely to play. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. Um, this has been Love at First Sight with Emperor Takashi. I really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. And I will see you guys in the next video. Alright, have a great day. Love you guys. Laters.